and sometimes we What's good people? It's your boy here. Man, man, this is a good day. A good day. Or well, uh, since it probably happened yesterday, this is a good week for seated VR gamers. Because John Carmack has just said something at Oculus Connect 5 that I've been saying for a long time that these developers needed to take in mind. And there's a few developers out there that has jumped ahead and has been on top of this. And that's making game more accessible to those who want to be seated. Now, listen to what John Carmack has to say about the subject. We still do kind of let things slip like that. Now, right now, the magical play experience of room scale or arena scale or world scale, I mean, all of this freedom here is incredibly amazing. Just last. Now, I have to agree with him on that. You know what I mean? I, I, I think the idea of room scale and arena scale and all that, I think that is awesome. And I love watching other people do it. I think that is a great thing to see. You know what I mean? And I think when it comes to. Um, VR as a eSport, I think it would definitely be something that is going to be fantastic to watch. All right. So let's see he's going Tonight, on. I, after it's like eight or nine o'clock in the evening, uh, somebody was showing me something that had been built in Quill that was like a 20 foot by 30 foot section, this giant sketch. And we were down uh, the lower level of the conference and convention mm -hmm. center. Nobody was around, just sketched out a giant guardian thing. And put it inside, put me inside it. I walked over to another room, walked back, got down on my hands and knees and crawled through a crawlway into another room, you know, looked up inside this aquarium. And this is amazing. You know, this is, a, this is the magic of VR. This is kind of what people imagine doing. But the reality- Right, that's what I hear people say all the time. This is what VR is all about. And yes, it is, you know what I mean? but not what VR is all about for everyone, right? So here he goes, continues on. The is, very rarely do you have this 20 by 30 foot open space that you can, that you can take advantage of experiences like this in. And, you know, and I chuckle whenever we have our promotional stuff where you have people, you know, athletic people swinging around wildly and ducking and bending uh, with VR where that's not going to be the reality of the way people are using this product most of the time. And I, uh, you know, making company strategic decisions uh, around your development around that right might not be <laughs> the wisest thing where it's going to be a niche thing. Uh, one, one direction I... One way of thinking oh, about things dog, is that I saw somebody move. You're the camera. About this Roger, move. that a lot of VR rides are like amusement park rides. They're like a roller coaster. And the classic VR things, the bending and diving and chucking things, that is in some ways like this experience mm -hmm. that uh, people go to and it's exciting, but you don't necessarily want to be doing that every day or even every week. Right, uh, that's what I'm saying. And that's say. why while we say 80-20 split gaming media, I'm pretty much telling people, uh, don't be surprised when people still wind up watching a lot of movies and TV shows inside this, and it's more than 20%. Um, I had said before how, at the very start of Oculus, I had bet someone else that it's going to be more than 50% of the time not in games, and I've, you know, I've been smug about well, winning. I don't know about that. I'm all about the games. You know but I mean? a new data point that came out about a year ago that I was pretty shocked about was that even game consoles, like you take. All a right, PS4. we're gonna stop right there because I think you, you guys got the gist of what he was saying. He's like, some people just want to sit at home. Roger, move! You're gonna knock my camera over. <laughs> you're being a brat right now. Now, yeah, so yeah, he's he's now upset. Oh, bad. <laughs> anyway. You know, he said some people just want to come home, sit, sitting, staying forward with with the, the thumbsticks. Now, I'm not saying sitting forward because you know I I kind of I move and I do this and stuff like that. But that is as much as it as it that I want to do in my gaming. And I think you know that is just what's up for all of us that enjoy doing it like that. That John Carmack is saying the things that he's saying to developers. 
not telling them to not do room scale and stuff like that but also you know just to keep in mind if you want to sell millions upon millions you have to you know cater to some of us that do it like that see let him finish off here real quick average users spend about half their time watching movies and things using that as their uh their set and top from box replacement or their dvd player blu-ray player which is true so, i do it on my xbox is, uh, the kind of boutique, uh, it's the marquee thing. It's the thing that brings people in and they will make a decision one way or the other. But a lot of the mundane stuff does wind up eating up a lot of the time that people wind up spending there. I'm going to stop right there. But well, hopefully, you, you know what I mean? If you agree with what I'm saying, that these developers need to really come up with a good sense of seated gaming for VR. And like I said, there's a lot of games that has already been there like obvious uh obvious vr you know what i mean um was it a serious sam fusion vr uh you know from other sun well i think those right there are the the main corporate of having a really good seated experience set up everything else is passable but the, the their developers just can't seem to get it right but anyway you guys have a good one. Hit that thumbs up if you like what I'm saying. Leave some comment. If you disagree, let's talk about it. All right, one.